Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beginning of the 2017, 2016 budget. Uh, my name is Brian Lapham. Um, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could quickly go around the room and give us your name. Nick Bridal. Regina Barnes. Mike Pierce. Sonny Kravitz. Steve Henderson. Brian Lapham, Vice Chairman. Danielle Augustine. Jones. Mike Pluff. Bob Ladd. Stephen LeBranch. Um, before we continue any further, I would just like to say a very big thank you to Eileen Latimer. She has run this board, she has worked on this board for several years, and she did a fantastic job through some really difficult <coughs> uh, meetings. But I just can't go without saying thank you to Eileen and all you've done for this town and the Budget Committee. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may? Yes. Uh, I would like to invite Mr. Frank DeLuca from the school board. Uh, mm -hmm. He was the alternate to Mr. Jerry Zanoy, who is no longer on this board. I'd like to invite him to at least sit up at the table and uh, introduce himself as uh, the school board representative. For the time being, his meeting is tomorrow night, where they will choose representation for the um, school board representative. Yeah, I talked to Eileen last. I mean, Eileen. Eileen on the brain. I talked to him, Jimmy, Friday last night. So, welcome aboard. If you're thank the you. permanent substitute. <laughs> but thank I'm you for coming. I'm afraid you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to develop that? <laughs> um, everyone has been sworn in, according to what I was Well, the gentleman be voting this night? Yes. I have so no he problem with him voting He won't be voting because he's not, he hasn't been chosen by his board That's yet. right. He, was the, he alternate, was the alternate. He was the alternate for last year's board, though, so he is a member of this committee. Oh, okay, that, he was. He was. Yeah. According so according to the RSAs, tomorrow. all positions expire when the elections are completed. Thus, the board of selectmen didn't have a representative of the budget committee until last night when they appointed sele uh, select uh, selectman uh, Barnes, and uh, the school committee has not made an appointment yet. So therefore, they do not have a representative legally sitting on this board. Well, we're not going to be voting on anything that he needs to vote on anyway. Do, uh, well, you, just I wanted to clarify not. before we vote who is going to be voting. I understand. Appreciate that. Okay. Well, well we got past that. Um, well, can I just make a comment? If if that's the way you feel, I can leave. There's no, no you're problem. welcome to stay. You're very welcome to stay. No. Just don't vote. That's all. Just that no one would no one would allow me to vote if I hadn't taken the oath of office, for example. But those technicalities are important to this our committee. Yeah. Traditionally speaking. <coughs> okay, we've gotten through all that. <coughs> Do I have a motion to start? for the Chairman of the Budget Committee. I was going to make a motion to uh, appoint uh, Mike Kluf as Chairman of the Budget Committee. Point or nominate? <laughs> Point? Mike no. Kluf. No, he doesn't want it. I respectfully decline, sir. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, is there a vacancy on the on the committee? Yeah, we're going to get to that. Because I got a phone call from Mary Louise Wolsey, and she said she'd like to come back on the board. Yes. I just want to, I'm just going down the order yeah, here. Yeah, no, I understand. So right now we're just looking for a chairman. I would, uh, Vice Chair, I would move to nominate Nick Bridal for the chairmanship. Okay. 
I have a second. I'll second it. I'll accept the nomination. Okay. I'll nominate Brian. I would second that. Okay. That's confusing. It's covering your bases, Bob. It is. <laughs> We're technical. <laughs> Okay, is that it? All those in favor of Nick? All those in favor of me? Nick, you got it. That should have been eight. I will review tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you have this go back to? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? I Sir? I would nominate Brian Lappin to continue as the vice chair of the committee. Uh, do I have a second for that nomination? Second. Seconded by Mr. Kravitz. Uh, do I have any other nominations for vice chair? Mr. LeBranch. Um, I'd like to nominate Mike Plouffe. Mike Plouffe. Is there a second for that? Second, Pat. Second. Any other nominations for vice chair? All right. Do both candidates accept the nominations, Mike? Yes. Brian? Okay. We have two candidates, Mr. Plouffe and Mr. Lapham. Uh, we'll first vote for Mr. Lapham. Uh, all those in favor of Mr. Lapham for vice chair? Vote of three. All those in favor of Mr. Plouffe for vice chair? Three. I'll abstain. <laughs> okay. I have six and one abstention. Mr. Plouffe, congratulations. Wait a minute. That means you can't sit next to me? I can take back my vote. <laughs> 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 well, Mr. Chairman, would you write? Read off the uh, vote count just for the video recording. Sure thing. Um, just mean, <coughs> for the chairman and the vice chairman. Of course, of Thank course. Um, there were seven in the uh, affirmative for, for myself and uh, three for Mr. Lapham. Um, and then for vice chair, there were three for Mr. Lapham and six for Mr. Plouff, one abstention being Mr. Plouff. Thank you. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Sure. I believe that the votes recorded for the minutes require that who voted is necessary. Okay. Um, we can look at it on the video. I would be I would be more than willing to go back and um, check the video for that record and make sure that it's reflected in the next meeting's minutes um, to cover that. I bring up that point of order because not all hands are visible on the right. on the screen. Okay. And also to point out for subsequent votes as well as to do an audit well, well, then I would recommend that we do an auditory roll call for uh, coming votes um, just to make sure it is reflected in the record properly as the minutes um, well, uh, except you entered everybody in the committee was introduced and, the and, was, and, and that's fine what we'll do is real quick we'll all just right. do another vote count right. of um, oh there you go sir um, for all those who voted for me, uh, if you would please raise your hands, I will go around the room. Miss Barnes, Mr. Pierce, Mr. Lapham, Mr. Henderson, Miss Augustine, Mr. Pluff, uh, Mr. Ladd, and Mr. LeBranch. Um, and then for Mr. Lapham, there were three votes. I have Mr. Kravitz and Mr. Ladd. This is a wonderful oh, point Mr. of order. Mr. Lapham voted for himself. He did? Yeah. Okay. I don't think uh, I it's did. a wonderful point of order as it's already showing its worth. I didn't vote. Um, oh, I didn't. You didn't? Or must count. You think didn't vote. So that was, that was an okay. abstention then? Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Jones, did you abstain in the chairman vote? Did not vote. You did not vote. Okay. Well, I thought you held your hand up for Nick. No, for vice chairman. Okay. okay. So it was actually, what, 7-2? Uh, seven two, correct. Two, not three. Um, and then for vice chair was for Mr. Lapham. We had three votes. If you would raise your hand so I can get an auditory record. Mr. Ladd, Mr. Kravitz, and Mr. Lapham. And then six votes for Mr. Pluff. If you would raise your hands. 
It was Mr. LeBranch, Mr. Jones, Miss Augustine, Mr. Henderson, Mr. Pierce, and Miss Barnes. Um, thank you for that port of honor, Tim. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, the Always try to help, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. Um, I believe the next point of order on the agenda, if there is um, no more positions to be filled, is the vacancy when Mr. Jones res uh, resigned last year from his uh, position. He vacated a one-year spot, which after discussing with the town, man town clerk was fillable only by appointment um, and not on the um, ballot. So therefore, we do have a one vacancy open um, to be filled by appointment uh, on this board. Um, I have... Chairman. Sir. It has been by tradition as well as a basic principle of fairness that this committee, whenever there's been a vacancy, has announced the vacancy uh, on TV and uh, asked everyone in town that might be interested to make it known to the chair that they wish to serve. And uh, once that list uh, gets assembled, uh, that we then have those persons come in and uh, present themselves for consideration at the subsequent meeting. And I would suggest that that would be the proper procedure in this case as well. It was already done. The meeting, the, the vacancy was never announced. Yes, it was. Nor has an in When? When was it announced at the Budget Committee for this season, Brian? Uh, it was announced at the Stuckman's meeting last week and this week. It was not announced in this meeting. Not in the Budget, in the budget committee. committee meeting, which has been... Well, we didn't have a meeting, so... I right. Would, I would tend to yield to um, the protocol that Mr. Jones has mentioned. Um, I think it is very fair to make a town announcement in a public forum um, for people who are interested in the town, if they wish to be considered for a candidate for this board, to please feel free to contact me. My contact information is on the website provided by the library um, that has all the committee and board members' um, names. I would be more than happy to field those requests, cultivate a list, and then we can address this at the next budget committee meeting next month. If uh, if that is acceptable, I, I think it's a good protocol for us to follow. I think uh, we did it last year when we had the two mm -hmm. vacancies, and I think it worked out fairly well for us as a board. Uh, Mr. Kravitz. Uh, Scott Blair is, isn't there a vacancy for his chief? No, his his was only a one year term, oh, okay. uh, and, and right. therefore he fell off okay. through the attrition. Well, yeah, right. what I want to mention is that Mary Louise Wol Wolsey called and she interested in coming on the board okay. for the vacancy. So. I will definitely keep her in consideration. I know Mr. Blair had contacted me as well via email and said that um, when the time was right, uh, he would like to be also considered yeah. for consideration. Yeah. But I don't want to jump the gun. I think I think Mr. Jones brought up a good point where we should invite this open to everybody in the public if they want to be a member of this board. I think that's more than acceptable. Um, we should encourage them to attend to the next meeting so that they yeah, can make I, their presentation. That, that is a, a wonderful point. Um, if if, we'll if send a they, of intent. Yeah, send a letter of intent to myself, to and I, I would more than encourage people to come in here and, and introduce themselves to the current board. And uh, if this is something that they feel they would like to get into, I think that that would be appropriate um, to deal with next month. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I think we might want to get a list going around the room with everybody's printed name, phone number, and email address. And so we can give that to the library so the town will have it, so we'll, we'll all have it, too. I, I, would, I would be more than happy to do that. I know we did that last year. Mm -hmm. And I also know that last year it, um, it took a couple times to get it going, but I'll start <laughs> one. Okay, go ahead. Just to make sure we're on the same page. Miss Augustine, if you would, uh, your name, your um, email address, and a good contact number for you. And just pass that on, and I will be more than happy to pass that to the library. This will be needed for the new members. The existing members that are on the sheet are already there. Unless there's a change of information. Right. Correct. Um, after the <clears throat> business of the appointments, which I think we addressed already, there is, I believe the next item on the list is a reminder about the Hampton Beach Village District annual meeting. Um, I would like to yield the time to either Mr. Loud or Mr. LeBranch. Uh, 
to inform the board of when that is. Thank you. The annual meeting for the There's Hampton. No new members down this side. Look at that way. Oh, new members. Okay. I have Mr. Henderson's, Miss Barnes. If you would just put your contact information on that, um, Mr. Deluca. If you want to fill out that. If it turns out that you are the permanent member, I will have you fill it out at the next meeting. How about that? <laughs> um, Mr. Ladd. Okay. On March 25th, the last Friday in March, the Hampton Beach Village District will be having its annual meeting. We encourage all registered voters in the Village District to attend, and residents of the district who are not registered can actually register, I think, from 1 to 7 on that Friday. It is an open town meeting form of government, not an SB2 form of government. So all those in attendance are, by the very nature of open town meeting, fully informed about the budget and the issues the village district will address prior to their vote. Um, on that, I have nothing further. I must anybody like any more. We're all, it's open to the public, right? Right. Absolutely. Yes, the public may attend, but if you're not a resident of the district, you may not vote. That's what I wanted to make sure everybody understands. Yeah, me. yeah. No, we've always encouraged non-residents of the district to come and support our activities. In other words, I can come down and harass you at your meeting. <laughs> yes. Well, we have a tradition of that we like to maintain. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, Mr. Ladd. Anybody else have anything else on that topic? It is noteworthy that at the village district annual meeting, uh, the ballots do not generally contain any warrant articles, right, Bob? And all those warrant articles are discussed and voted on at the open meeting, which I believe begins at what seven o'clock? Yes. And so the real the real action in, in that form of government, so to speak, is uh, at the meeting, not the ballot. Is what, starting now at noontime? The voting is starts at, is it 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock to 7, you may register to vote and vote. The meeting starts at 7 p.m. But you're voting for, <clears throat> you're voting for one commissioner, one treasurer, one clerk, one uh, moderator, and one supervisor of the checklist. That's what you're going to be voting for between 1 and 7. Okay, that's done by an Aust Aust is it Australian ballot? Yeah, they call it. Yeah, uh -huh. and then the the budget itself. There are two, there are there are four warrant articles in all. The first one is the election of offices. The second two have to do with the budget. One is for the general government. One is for the culture. And then the third warrant article is any other business that's necessary. I'll try to get some more copies of the intermodal proposal. I I have I've only got three left. Mm -hmm. I put some in the library. I'll call RPC and see if I can get some more coffee. We'd appreciate that. But how many would you? It's fairly thick, so. Uh, don't cost any trees to reproduce yeah, well, too many. I'm not paying for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve just, to, just to emphasize, all the warrant articles you mentioned, including the two budgets, they're not on the ballot. They're actually voted at, at the meeting. They're posted. Yeah, I mean, they they're voted posted. on at the meeting. I they're mean, posted as warrant articles, Tim. Right, but right. they're actually voted at the meeting. Right, right. I just want to, because a lot of people think that just going and seeing the ballot and that's the, and they're done. No. The real action, in my opinion, is the meeting itself. Exactly, right. that starts at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to highlight that. And that, 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 just for the record, that's the budget that we passed at one of our previous uh, budget meetings. Yes, most that certainly that is. Yeah. Which they recommended, correct. Um, that was, uh, if people wanted to go review that, they could. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you, Mr. Ladd, Mr. LeBranch. Um, going right down the agenda, I have old and new business. Uh, the one point of old business I wanted to attend to is there uh, have been some minutes that uh, I need to connect with Ms. Latimer on um, in regards to the meeting that we had after the deliberative session. We had a quick, short meeting uh, in regards to a vote on the Warren Articles where the um, language was changed. Those meetings have not been approved by us yet. I'm pretty sure they have been completed from what I took from Ms. Latimer. I will work with her to get those and bring them hopefully for next meeting so we can approve those and review them and uh, go over any questions that you may have. You also um, need the minutes from the last meeting. The last meeting as well? 
I will work on getting those uh, to keep make sure we keep up to date. That way we don't have the, a flood of minutes um, to go over. Um, any other old business? Kind of hard to have old business with a new committee. I understand that. <laughs> Just going through the motions, getting my, getting my feet wet. Uh, any new business? Yeah, I think there is... Uh, Obviously, we need to discuss, not necessarily tonight, probably perhaps the next meeting, uh, to discuss the uh, schedule uh, for especially the spring. Obviously, right. we're going to have a meeting in April. Uh, last year, we had uh, NHMA in here, for example, to explain the budget process. Correct. And there were a couple of other informational meetings that we had during the spring. Uh, and so probably I would suggest that in uh, April's agenda, be some accommodation for a discussion of what might be done in subsequent meetings during the spring at least. Yeah. Obviously also there needs to be the formulation of the calendar which is yeah, traditionally right. done. Yep. Uh, and, and that's traditionally been done by the chair in concert with the um, powers to be in terms of their schedule because we want to be coordinated as best we can. Yep. Um, I don't know if that's appropriate for the next meeting or not. It might be a bit premature. Well, uh, but sort of get started. It doesn't hurt to look at it, yeah. yeah. Right. But I think, you know, if, if, if people come in and think about what, what uh, we might be using the spring meetings for, then we can then discern how many meetings we need to have. Right. Certainly we need to have the April meeting at a minimum. So I, I would, I would um, tend to agree with you on the April meeting at, at minimum just to kind of discuss where we want to go. Um, and the, the, I like to refer to those last spring meetings as workshops. I mean, that NHMA yeah. session was very well done. Mm -hmm. um, I was very, I learned a lot being a new budget committee member. I learned a lot from that meeting. It definitely <coughs> something. Um, and one of the values there, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that the New Hampshire Municipal Association, NHMA, uh, we pay an annual dues to. And because of the enormity of our dues, which I need, believe is now like 17000 or so, uh, we are entitled to a free seminar from them. And what we did last year was we actually cut our own usage of our budget because we had traditionally sent new members up to Manchester and paid, you know, 100 bucks a head to go there. And with having them come into our meeting, everyone got a chance to be educated uh, on the same basis. And we found going to Manchester to be much more optional than, than, than otherwise might be. So I would encourage uh, us to once again. Now, that's really out the control of the Board of Selectmen because they decide... They are the, the actual representative. Mm -hmm. They are the entity that NHMA represents, just the Board of Selectmen. So we need to get them to approve us using them again for that free seminar. Traditionally, they don't use it themselves. Yeah. They, they may have a different and mindset this year. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was very beneficial to <coughs> us um, last year. I'd be more than willing to follow up with the Board of Selectmen to um, get that going again. I think maybe... Um, especially if there's any members of the public that would like to come or other boards um, that are interested in the budget committee process. I don't think it would be uh, ill-received to invite them to that meeting as well if we do have another one and schedule another one so that way more people can get use of that information because it is very, very good information. If I may, while you're following up on that, I think it would be nice if we could have something from the DRA come down and give us a presentation. And back to the calendar, though, you better get into the and talk to Christina as soon as you can because the days will all be gone. Oh yeah, I, I understand that. It's a, uh, it was one of the things. Um, calendar is very important. I know I used it religiously last year, and um, it turned out that we even had to add a couple meetings last year. It's, it's prior, priority, priority number one. You have to go in and grab them real quick because they'll disappear real fast. Um, is anybody aware of the DRA doing some sort of presentation like the NHMA did last year? I am not. Uh, they're, they're under no particular obligation like the NHMA is, yeah. uh, uh, as I described earlier. Uh, it would be very useful to have them come in, in my opinion. Uh, I don't hold out a lot of hope that they'll come in, yeah. but it wouldn't hurt to reach out and talk to them. It, it, worst case they're going to say is no. I think if they have a presentation like that that they do have already in place that would be something as simple that they can just come down and present it, I think it's worth pursuing. Um, if not, it might spark some conversation on their level to create something. Uh, it might be a long shot, but hey, uh, it, it might be worth asking. Um, any, And I encourage people on the note of the um, agendas and the, 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 the dates for 
the calendar. If anybody has any agenda items, please feel free to send them my way. Um, Nicholas underscore bridal at me.com is my email address. Um, I'll be more than happy to get everything on the agenda to discuss it accordingly, give everybody their time to discuss items. Mr. LeBranch. Also, <clears throat> under new business, I think it was Article 42 that Steve Jassam uh, petitioned that all legal uh, public meetings have to have their agendas posted five 43, days. Article 43. 43, yeah. okay. Yeah. And, and I believe that passed as well. Um, and, of course, that applies to us, correct? Correct. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I know in the past um, – we didn't always get the get them posted five days ahead. I think yeah, the right. old law five was days, yeah. the law was like 24 hours or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's, that applies to us now. So just to make sure that it's. Uh, I don't know if that applies to us or not because that's advisory as the law. Was it advisory? Yes, the town attorney mm -hmm. advised at the delivery session that it was advisory only. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, and that's what I, yeah, that was the point I was going to brought up. Is that I'm pretty sure the, the town oh, attorney good. did say it was just an advisory. Okay, order. because by law it's. Yeah. What, 24 hours? Yes. Okay, so then I didn't know about the advisory. Something else, since I'm talking, I might as well at least ask. Sure. So who is the, um, who's the new chairman of the selectmen? Uh, the chairman of the selectmen is Rusty Bridal. Oh, so, and then the school board's having their meeting tonight. We might end up with a trifecta. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. We might end up with a trifecta. It's, it's all <laughs> in the family. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there any other new business? I thought I saw a hand on this side. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you talk to DIRA, do they, make, do they make have a PowerPoint presentation or something that, you know, that we could send us? Yeah, if they have something that's already pre-set up, I'd be yeah. more than happy to get that down here and, uh, and at least, if I can have somebody come with them and present it, that would be better. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely something worth yeah, pursuing. They'll say budget constraints. Yeah. Every uh, committee, Mr. Chairman, uh, establishes its own rules, mm -hmm. uh, and to the extent that we're going to have rules, we're still a large committee, a little smaller than in the past, but still a large committee. The larger the committee, I believe, the more ne necessary it is to have some semblance of rules, not necessarily uh, exhaustive, but mm -hmm. uh, that's something that probably should be discussed as well. And that, of course, begs the question, uh, in the past couple of years, we've had a rules committee to, to work on that. Uh, which then asks the question, should we have uh, subcommittees in general, which is another question that needs to be addressed perhaps at the uh, next meeting. Or... Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the way you're going with that. I definitely would like to address the vacancy on the board before we start um, discussing subcommittees and putting people in those positions. I definitely um, want to address the topic of rules at some point. Um, just to make sure we're all on the same page. There's a pretty good group of people here. Um, we got a lot accomplished last year. Um, I want to keep keep the momentum going. Um, definitely something I will recommend putting on the next meeting's agenda um, is discussing the rules, get those out of the way first, um, just to keep us all on the same page. Mr. Ladd. I would suggest within the body of any rules discussion that certain things such as time management be heavily focused the number of meetings we have, can they be compressed? Can the meetings be shorter on a nightly basis? Um, and an attempt of uh, working on a more harmonious relationship with the Board of Selectmen, I'd like to see as a possibility this year. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ladd. Mr. Pierce. Uh, one thing we started last year is being recognized by the chair before you start talking. Yes. Hold your hand up and then get recognized and then start talking. That'd be great. That way we won't have six people talking at the same time. I think that was a civil, civilized way to do it last year. And I really think that for the most part, uh, last year everybody got their ability to, to speak and uh, get their position heard. Um, I, I want to see that continue uh, this year. I, I think it was very uh, a good way to conduct business last year. Um, and I'd be more than happy to, if, if that's the agreement of the board when we discuss the rules, to adopt that again this year. Um, other than that, any other new business? Oh, I have a point to set the date for the next meeting. Sure. Um, I would say our, typically our meetings are the third Tuesday of every month. I'm going to... Um, move forward with that date in mind. I have to confirm it 
with Christina. Yeah. Um, if it is the case, the tentative date as of right now would be April 19th, Tuesday at 7 p.m. in this room. I will work with um, Christina tomorrow. Um, I will stop by and ask her to make sure we can get, reserve the room. Um, I will also try to reserve every Tuesday for the rest of the year before we get the calendar approved by us, just be just to go ahead and make sure we have the rest of the Tuesdays. She does that every year automatically. Does she do it automatically? It's already okay. on the meeting okay. calendar. Okay. I will confirm with her tomorrow just to make sure. Um, other than that. We move to adjourn. Well, I would like to welcome Ms. Barnes, our, our new Slightman's rep. Um, Mr. Henderson, who got voted in this year. Ms. Augustine, who got voted in this year. Mr. Jones, Mr. Lapham are, are, are veterans that are got voted in again. Uh, Mr. DeLuca, it was a pleasure uh, having you tonight. Um, if there's no other uh, new business, I would entertain a motion to- It's on the table. Oh. I actually just want to say that I am very happy to be here, and I will relay to my fellow selectmen about the NHMA workshop. I think I, as a, you know, Workshops always are beneficial, especially if everyone can be in one room and sort of, you know, work together, ask questions amongst each other. I definitely think that that's something that uh, you should do. And also, I also hope that the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen can work together as best as possible because I just started my MBA classes a couple weeks ago, and my first class is communication and you know organizational behavior between fellow fellow workers in the workplace and it's just amazing how like those two things have just like that and the selectman position have just like come together and i'm hoping that i can use my newly gained knowledge to get everyone to teach communicate us how to, properly teach us how to be civilized <laughs> huh? Teach us yeah. how to be civil. No, I just, Absolutely. it's just really like. In share time management. I got a couple of light bulbs going on up there, you know, ever since I started doing this. So I hope I can share my, uh, all well, the knowledge I gained Having a common education it. with that workshop and others actually facilitates a common understanding which facilitates that kind of communication. Right. Right. So it's absolutely critical that we have a, to the extent that we can get one, a common education on, on matters that apply to this committee. And Definitely. as far as relations with the selectmen are concerned, uh, I, I do not uh, subscribe to the notion that there has been turf battles, as some have described it, between this committee and the Board of Selectmen. I just, I just don't think that's appropriate uh, to, to be thinking in those terms. I do not think in those terms. I do not believe that this committee and the Board of Selectmen have been at odds, although we've differed in terms of our positions because we have different views. That's fine. That's not contention. There is no contention right, between mean, this committee and the Board of Selectmen. Exactly. So I just wanted to get that out. There, and there really is, and I challenge anyone who wants to, to argue that point, whether it's in this committee or on the street, why that is simply not true. There has been no contention between the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen. It's just an ugly rumor. I'm tired of hearing about it. And I'm not suggesting Selectman bonds that you're putting it forth, but I know others have, and I want to put that out there right now. It's just BS. Yeah. I don't, and just to address, I don't know what's really gone on in the mm -hmm. past, you know, but I just know what I want. <laughs> I want everyone to try to work together as best as possible. So. Well, welcome aboard, Ms. Barnes. All right. It'll be good to work with you this year. Um, being no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. On the table. Motion to adjourn, please. Second. <laughs> Motioned by Mr. LeBranch, seconded by Sonny Kravitz. Okay, I have 1934. All in favor? All right. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you very much.